This is part two of the presentation, what is this thing called an iPad? And in part two, we're going to look at uh, 100 things you can do with an iPad. And for part two, it'll be just the first 50. Part three, we'll see the remaining. So what things can you do with an iPad? The, um, the rest of the presentation is going to look at at least 100 different things you can do with an iPad. And they will look at apps, some free, some paid. Um, if those apps don't really suit you, then you could look in the App Store for similar apps. So there are lots of apps in the App Store, and that's the strength of the iPad is that there are so many apps. So the slogan, there's an app for that, is quite apt. Anything you want to do, search the App Store and there'll be an app, a program that you can download to your iPad. Some are free, some are paid. The uh, best way to get the most out of your iPad is to keep looking at what is being released in the App Store. And the App Store is an app, as we looked at in the last uh, uh, part of the video, uh, on your iPad, and you can search for apps in a number of ways. So at the, at the bottom there of that screen, the, these are the, the featured apps, and one of the, the featured apps is a little starter kit, which is a, a suggestion of different apps that you might like to download and start immediately. Um, there are top charts, so you can get the top free apps, the top um, uh, paid apps, the highest grossing apps. Purchased whatever you buy, you can uh, you can then see in your purchase tabs and updates in the uh, the bottom there with a little eight in the red circle indicates that on my iPad there are eight apps that need to be updated. The App Store look at it consistently to see what you can find. You can also search for an app as well if you know the name of one. To search for an app, you open the App Store on your iPad and that's the icon for it, or the other way is if you have a computer, you open the iTunes program on your computer and you click on the iTunes store. And there is an app store within the iTunes store. Any app you, you download and purchase from the iTunes store on a computer will then immediately be downloaded to your iPad next time it's synchronized. Um, that's a, a screen cap of the actual iTunes store on a computer. So at the, uh, the top there are all the different types of media that you can search for and, and download. The App Store is highlighted. You can see there are, there are two ways to search for apps. There's iPhone apps or iPad apps. The iPad uh, link is highlighted and near the, uh, this is the first part of that screen. It gives you some new apps, some, some noteworthy apps. And along the right down, if you clicked in all categories, it gives you different types of apps, different genres of apps. There's a lot of apps there, you, you just need to search for them. There's also an app called App Advice, and you can uh, search for that in the App Store and download that and install it. This one's a free one, and it'll give you new apps that are coming out in genres. It'll give you reviews. It also gives you lists, and uh, it's something if you're not sure what's coming out, to just have a look at it once a week and see what's coming out that might be useful. In addition to, to the app, uh, to find new apps, there's also podcasts. And a podcast is a, uh, a video that comes out once a week, or this one's a once a day. And you can subscribe to that podcast. And then once a day, that new edition of App Advice Daily will be pushed down to your iPad for you to watch. It's only about five minutes. It's free. And uh, every day, there's a different app that they review. And um, there will be more on podcasts as we go through the rest of this presentation. But you subscribe to that. You could watch it online too. You could go into the, uh, to the, the app store and click on the first one and watch it as it streams. The best way is to subscribe to it and then at least you've got a copy of it. If you uh, want to know how to use an app, you've downloaded something like Skitch, for example, and for iPad, Skitch is, a, is an annotating tool. It can take a screen capture of something and you can annotate it and draw on it and then put it into something else, another application. So if you wanted to download that app but you didn't know how to use it, YouTube is the best way of looking for how apps work. 
search in YouTube for the name of the app and there'll be a, a video that somebody's done, a review of that app. Learn how to use it by looking at YouTube. YouTube is not just for viral videos of what the cat did today. It's a lot of useful information on YouTube. So the first app that we're going to look at, if you've got a, a 3G Wi-Fi model, then it has an inbuilt GPS device and um, Google Maps is the best map app which will give you um, or real time maps that give you 3D maps, uh, traffic information. But if you didn't like that one, by just going into the App Store and, and putting in the search term maps, there's all these different types of navigation um, apps. Some of them you need to download and just try them out. Uh, if there's a light version, download that first because that'll give you an ad supported free version, which isn't the full version, but at least you can see what it's like before you uh, buy it. Uh, reading books. So the iPad is very good for reading books. Uh, as well as the iBooks store, the other way to read books is by downloading the Kindle app or the Google Play app. Google Play is from Amazon, uh, from uh, Google, sorry. Uh, and Mega Reader is another one which will give you access to uh, hundreds and hundreds of free books. Uh, if you have an Amazon account, uh, you can buy books from the Amazon bookstore and you can, you can read them on your Kindle app. You don't actually need a Kindle. The same with Google Play. You can buy books from the, app, the Google store and read them in the Google Play app. They're all free. The apps are free. The books you're going to have to pay for unless you go for the re, uh, mega reader one, the free books. Reading PDFs. So PDF is, is um, a file that has been... Um, or something that's been saved as a PDF will keep its formatting. There are a lot of PDF files available on the internet. Uh, if, for example, you're downloading an instruction manual for your TV, that would be in a PDF format. There is an app, and there are many of them. Some of them are paid, some of them are free, but the Adobe PDF Reader is a free one, which allows you to download PDFs and read them um, on the iPad. You can always email PDF files to yourself and then when you open that email on the iPad, you could then open it in a number of different apps. So this is a, a, an email, a 100 Uses for Evernote, which is a PDF file that I've emailed to myself. I've opened it in my email so the actual PDF is open and then on the, the top right there's a little right facing arrow which if you click that gives you a number of different apps that I have installed on my iPad that I can read that PDF in and the whatever you get on your screen there will also depend on what you have installed. There are four different uh, pages of apps that can read PDFs that I have installed. I usually open it in Adobe Reader because in that um, app you can annotate the PDFs and you can edit them. Uh, so PDF reading in an iPad uh, is, it's actually very good. A lot of the note-taking apps like Notability, Good Notes, you can uh, open PDFs in those and you can annotate and edit and write, and write notes on top of the, P the, the PDF. So reading news, and this is not uh, news such as newspapers, this is uh, things like um, blogs or web pages. Um, readability, for example, turns web pages into a clean view, so you get rid of the ads and all the media that goes with it, it's just the news. Instapaper, you can save web pages for offline reading later. Uh, Reader will look at RSS feeds, so feeds every time there's a, a new story on a, a newspaper site, for example, it sends an RSS feed. You, you can subscribe to the RSS feeds of a website um, or a newspaper and read those in Reader. BBC, for example, is one of the, uh, the, the websites and you can actually look at the news feeds from the BBC News, but you look up any, any news uh, organisation, you'll find it on the internet. For reading blogs and web pages, there is an app called Pulse, and this is a free one, and that's an aggregator. So it brings all of the news, the blogs, social networks, magazine articles, 
web pages all into one place. And so you can look at a number of categories. So if you're interested in lifestyle categories, it will give you a lot, a lot of different um, magazines or websites that you can subscribe to and it will aggregate all that into a, a magazine style um, app. So let's look at a couple of examples. In Pulsar you're interested in travel and you could have a look at the travel section and there are a number of, of web pages or blogs that you could subscribe to and that is the news that will Pulse would aggregate for you. So say we wanted to subscribe to Fodor's Travel, delivering fresh travel finds daily. Uh, at the bottom there is the Fodor's Travel news feed. So there's just little stories there that that magazine or that website is publishing every day and it just aggregates all those into a feed for you. The one at the top is another feed that I've subscribed to, Instagram Top Photos. Uh, if I clicked one of the actual stories, five reasons to get off the beach in Los Cabos, on the right hand side there is the actual story that appeared in that travel blog. And I can, uh, on the top right, there's a couple of A's to make the, uh, the, the text bigger or smaller. Pulse is very useful. If you like re reading websites and you, know, you have specific categories that you're interested in, so technology is the one that I like to look at. There's, there's entertainment, there's all sorts of stuff. Download it. Reading magazines. You can subscribe to magazines and there are uh, Australian magazines, there are international magazines and you can subscribe to any of those. There's a shop where you can actually go and search for a magazine. And this is, in this example I've subscribed to Macworld and iPhone Life and uh, they're ready to download. You can see the little arrows pointing down. They're ready to be downloaded. Zinio itself is a free app. What is not free are their magazines. So you can, you can buy it by the issue or you can subscribe for a whole year or six months. Um, you'll be notified when there's a new issue ready to download. You get an email, you get a notification in the notification center. You can archive them in the cloud to save space. So these ones, uh, which were in May 2012, I haven't downloaded yet. They're still there in the cloud, ready for me to download, and I can read them. Newsstand, uh, another built-in app. It's one where you can subscribe to one issue of a magazine or annually. It's just a different way of looking at magazines, but similar to the one we just looked at, um, Zinio. Uh, either one is okay. Um, I have no preference either way. I've got some magazines from Newsstand and some through Zinio. And there are, uh, that screen grab there is from the iTunes store under magazine for the search term. Gives you a different uh, look at the uh, magazines. If you, look, if you like football, you can subscribe to the, the AFL record. And every week you've got the AFL record without even going to the game. Uh, going paperless. That's what I'm you know, trying to do. And there are a number of apps that will help you to go paperless, along with the scanner. So Evernote is an app which allow, allows you to take notes, um, audio notes, video notes, scan something, scan some, some text, uh, scan your receipts, and, and upload them to Evernote. There's an iPad note um, app, there's a computer app, which keeps everything synchronized. And I've done a a whole lot of videos on Evernote. So have a look at the end of this video for the uh, address of my YouTube channel if you're interested in looking at paperless. Skitch is an annotating app. You can take screen grabs of anything, annotate with arrows, borders, circles, notes, and save them as images and then embed them or, or email them somewhere. DocScan HD is a, an app that will allow you to take a picture of, of something with your camera, iPad camera, iPhone camera and turn it into text like a PDF. And if you want to go paperless, this has nothing to do with the iPad, but go and buy yourself a scan snap snap scanner. Excellent. Learning something. Uh, iTunes U is another free app to download, which allows you to look at whole complete courses from universities, colleges and schools throughout the world. 
and uh, they are generally the full university course with all of the lectures and the presentations and the assignments and the worksheets, all free. Um, that is a screen grab from the iTunes U. So, for example, I wanted to learn how to do some programming, programming, and um, to make a uh, create an app for for the iPad. So there's a, a whole course on that, which is teaching me the programming skills to do that. iTunes U has a store, so you can go and search for anything you're interested in. So if you're interested in mathematics, it'll, it'll give you all the different courses that are available that you can download and look at in that in the uh, iTunes U app. So there's an example there from um, my iPad, a screen grab of the types of courses that are around, new courses that are coming up. Uh, they bundle them together to try and give you a better way of searching for them. But if you, if you want to learn something, something new for free, then iTunes U is well worth a look. A radio player. Uh, there is an app called TuneIn Radio. There's a free version which is ad supported and there is the pro version. And that has uh, local and global radio live and over 70,000 stations, 2 million on demand programs. So if you wanted to listen to your radio on the iPad, you could uh, look at all of the radio stations in, in Victoria, add them as favourites in this app and you could play them. Uh, if you're not at home within within a wireless hotspot, then that's all going to add to your data. So you need to be, be careful of that if you've got a 3G one, that it's streaming data, and that's going to eat into your data plan. If you're on a Wi-Fi network, no problem. There are other radio players. Search in the App Store. Search term, radio players. Uh, IMDB, I use this one all the time. If you're watching a, a movie or, or you want to know who, who that actor was or how old is he or how tall is he, uh, IMDB has details about every movie and TV show ever made. Uh, and it's uh, a really good app for just sort of knowing what's happening in, the, in shows and movies that you're watching. So if you, if you wanted to look at a... A TV show and find out what all the episodes were, what they were about, when they were made. Uh, IMDb, really good. Something for the cat, and um, there are something for the dog as well. So if you've got pets and you want you want them to to play with your iPad as well, um, look in the search in the search uh, search in the App Store. Cat games, dog games, bird games. This one's called Game for Cats, and I'll. I'll um, just to sort of show you what it does. This one is a little mouse and uh, the cat's pretending to ignore it at the moment. But every time she hits the mouse it'll squeak and, and the score will go up and she can play that for hours. That's enough of that I think. Uh, YouTube, I mentioned YouTube before. Uh, there is a YouTube app you can download, and there are a number of YouTube apps, but I think the official one, it looks like that in the App Store, that's the icon. And uh, if you're going to use YouTube, then you need to create a YouTube account, and there's the address there. And YouTube is part of Google, so if you have a Google account, Gmail for example, then you'll be able to, you've already got a, a Google account, you just have to create a new account for Google, uh, for YouTube. The reason you need a YouTube account is if you're watching, uh, you're finding uh, videos on YouTube, so you're looking for, for videos on how to use Evernote, for example, you can save them as favourites. And when you go back to your YouTube app, you can go to your favourite section and all the videos that you want to look at there. You don't have to go searching for them again. There are millions of YouTube videos. Uh, to find the same one again is really difficult. Believe me, I've done, I've done it, tried it, couldn't find it. Uh, create an account. You can create playlists, you can create favourites, uh, you can take your own videos and upload them. You might never do that, but for the purpose of looking at YouTube, uh, favourites and playlists are very, very good. And there's the address there to actually uh, create a YouTube account. If you've got an account, you would sign in there. If you haven't got one, you would actually create a new account at, accounts, at accountsgoogle.com. Uh, just a little aside before we go on to the next uh, lot of um, apps. 
there are many devices in your home these days. They're all connected wirelessly. So you've got a you could have a TV that's that's connected wirelessly to the internet. You've got uh, an iPad, you've got phones, you've got computers. You might have um, what else could there be? Printers, for example, scanners, all connected wirelessly and can communicate to each other. You don't have to be in the same room to use the internet or to use different media. And so often these days we're going to find this sort of situation where you have your whole family in the, in the living room all doing different things and all on different devices. So there's someone who's watching the TV, someone's on the laptop, someone's on the phone, someone's using an iPad. They're all sharing the internet. They can all theoretically share your media resources and play them on different devices. So to the next couple of, of slides, I just want to look at apps that will help you to stream your media around the house to whatever device you want. How do you actually connect your iPad to the TV and watch what's on your iPad on the TV on that bigger screen? Uh, and what is an Apple TV and how does that work with an iPad? Uh, multitasking, because who watches TV without playing on their iPad these days? I don't. So streaming media. We talk about streaming, but what actually is streaming? And it can be video, it can be audio, and it's just transmitted over the, the internet, computer network, the internet, or it could be uh, streamed over your home network, immediate playback. So rather than download a movie uh, from YouTube and store it on your hard drive and play that later, that's offline playback. If you go to YouTube, as an example of a streaming site, and click play, uh, the, that video will start to be downloaded to your device, in this case an iPad, and you can watch it as it's being downloaded. When it's finished playing, uh, it's not stored on your iPad. If you want to watch it again, you have to restream it. So if you have a 3G data plan, every time you stream something, it's eating into your data plan. If you download it, it's only going to take the, the data for the first time you download it. But most things now are streaming. So if you're going to listen to the radio online, that's streaming radio. If you're going onto the ABC site to watch on demand TV, that's streaming. Uh, it's not downloading. And streaming is the way we are going in media in the future. Um, streaming means that you can watch media, and on media I'm talking about a TV show or a movie or a news program or a YouTube video or listen to radio, you're doing it in real time as data comes into your device. And there's some examples of streaming. So there's an app called the ABC iView which will let you watch Channel 2, ABC, uh, ABC 1, ABC 2, ABC 3, ABC 4, all their four channels. You can watch all of their programs on demand streamed down to your iPad and from there you could then project what that um, program is onto your uh, TV. You can uh, Other ways of streaming is an Apple TV which we'll talk about in a minute, home sharing which we'll talk about in a minute, and YouTube and there's a lot of different apps for streaming. Now the opposite of streaming is when you download the media and you watch it offline later. And uh, I, I download a lot of YouTube videos because I want to keep them. Uh, and some of them I don't download, but I add them to my favourites so I can watch them again or I might add them to a playlist and organise them. And I need a YouTube account for that. So what are we doing with this multi, um, web multicasting and, and streaming? You can watch TV on demand. And this is for Australian TV. So there are apps down the bottom there for uh, different types of streaming. So there's the SBS, the ABC iView, which is the uh, green one there, and the ABC uh, News programs on the, on the right there. The BBC iPlayer gives you uh, some BBC programs, but it is a subscription app, that one, so it costs you so much a month, it might be $5 a month, to get access to that. Because the BBC iPlayer, if you're going, to, if you're going onto the BBC iPlayer website, it will not let you 
watch anything because you are not in the United Kingdom. You have to have a British IP address. Uh, so for everyone else in the world who's not in Britain, they've released the BBC iPlayer app. But it, this is subscription and it doesn't give you the full range of the BBC players. So nonetheless, it's still good. But I will show you later how to actually get onto the, the full BBC site. Um, Crackle is another streaming um, app which has movies, free movies. A fair, fairly big range, but there's a, there's a lot of other ways you watch TV on demand. Just go to a website if you're in Australia. Um, Channel 7 has one, but they don't have an app for it, so you actually have to watch it on their website. Uh, Channel 9 also, the 9 MSN News, you could get onto that and watch Channel 9 programs on demand, but they don't have an app for it. It's a bit short-sighted of them, I think. Um, but they're all streaming. So this is an example of Crackle, and there's some of the movies that Crackle has, and, and that's free. And if you wanted to watch uh, comedians in cars getting coffee, you can just click on that and you'll be able to watch that video on your iPad, or if you've got it connected to an Apple TV, project it onto a, a TV using AirPlay. Uh, and they've got TV shows, they've got shows, they've got um, movies, and they change all the time. So Crackles was well worth downloading. Other ways, though, you can connect your iPad to an Apple TV. And an Apple TV is a device that you get from the uh, Apple Store. It's hundred dollars or a bit less. And it allows you to stream video from your iPad using something called AirPlay, which is built into the um, iPad. So whatever is on your um, iPad will be projected via your Apple TV onto your big screen TV so that you can watch it in that big screen environment or you can share it with other people. And it comes with a remote control and all you need is a HDMI cable that goes in one end of the Apple TV and in the other end, of, uh, the uh, US, it's got a USB port, I think. No, it's an HDMI port on both ends. And at the back of your TV, you need a spare HDMI port to plug it into. Uh, and in the links document, there's some, some links on how you actually do this in a bit more detail. Now, AirPlay, when, you have, when you're watching a, a video on your iPad, if you see on the right-hand side, there's a little AirPlay symbol. If you see that in the video you're watching, then that video is, um, will be able to be projected from your iPad and displayed on your big screen TV. And you can do that if you've got an Apple TV. Apple TV will, will uh, show now uh, videos, TV shows, movies, uh, through AirPlay on a TV because it's wireless. You can do it with YouTube. So any YouTube video, if you've got an Apple TV, you can watch the YouTube video on your TV. Your iTunes collection of video, um, many movie apps, so Crackle, and the ABC iView and the SBS On Demand can be projected onto a TV using an Apple TV. That's the intermediate, intermediary device. You've got to connect an Apple TV to your uh, HD TV through an HDMI cable. Uh, once it is very simple, it's just one cable. That's all. Change on the on the TV remote. You change the input to look at the Apple TV. Look at the links document for some more information on how to do it. Uh, whatever's on your iPad can also be displayed on your TV, and that's called mirroring. And you do it again with an Apple TV. So if you're looking at a game, playing a game on uh, your iPad, and you want to see that game on your 55-inch TV, then you can mirror using the Apple TV. Whatever's on the Apple TV can be shown on the TV, uh, and, and then everyone can see it. So if you're playing a multiplayer game, you can have more, uh, more than one person playing the game, and everyone can, can see what's happening. So it's like a mirror image of whatever is displayed on the screen, to a TV, to a monitor, to an HD projector. And you connect your um, iPad to the TV using the Apple TV, or you can go to the Apple Store and, and get a digital AV adapter cable uh, and an HDMI cable, which will connect it if you don't have an Apple TV. Um, so you can, you can mirror up to the TV using 
uh, an Apple TV and AirPlay that's wirelessly. And if you don't have an Apple TV, you can connect your iPad with a cable to the TV. So if you have a, uh, an HDMI port on your TV, you go and get an, a digital adapter uh, from the App Store, from the Apple Store, or from uh, JB Hi-Fi have them, in, uh, Myers have them anywhere that sells Apple products. And in uh, one end of the digital adapter goes into the iPad dock port, which is at the bottom of your iPad. And the other end, you've got a choice of um, uh, an HDMI cable, which will allow you to connect to the HDMI uh, port of a TV. If you don't have uh, HDMI, then the uh, digital adapter will work with the component cables. Uh, some ways of connecting your TV. Um, the other way of, of streaming a media is to use home sharing, set up home sharing. And this really only works if you've got a computer and you're running iTunes. And you can stream media from iTunes to your iPad using home sharing. Um, so you need iTunes running on a Mac or a PC and you need a wireless network, which you would have. So if you've got you know, 42 gigabytes of video and movies and TV shows, and you've only got a, a 32 gigabyte iPad, you can't fit all this on your iPad, but you can stream it. So whatever is, um, whatever device has the iTunes library, so maybe it's a, a, a laptop computer in, a, in, a, in a, an office, as long as that computer is on and it's uh, got iTunes running and you've set up home sharing, it's, it's just a simple menu option in iTunes, then any device in your house like an iPad, a phone, another computer uh, that's sharing the same network, and they will be, will be able to access that iTunes library and stream the, the uh, movies around your house, inside your network. No internet involved in this one. So any computer, phone, iPad can share the media, and they just have to be connected to the same network, and by default they all will. No, not all your media needs to be physically stored on the iPad, which you, you can't do because if you start to, to collect TV shows, movies, songs, there's just so much uh, space you're going to need. You're not going to be able to fit everything on there. Watch them. Take them off the iPad. Uh, there's an example of, of home sharing in iTunes. There's uh, the airplay symbol at the top there so any any tv show so the kojak if i wanted to watch kojak uh, i could double click that that file and if i wanted to watch it on a big screen tv i can click that airplay button i'm, I'm using an imac library so this is a computer that's in another room uh, a, a mac computer that's turned on that has itunes running it's got the, where the main itunes library is anything that I have my phone, if I wanted to, to watch something on my phone, I could access and share the iMac library. I don't have to have the uh, information, um, the data, the movies, actually on the iPad. I can use my iTunes. This is another main reason why I have a computer and I don't just use iCloud because you can't do it if you've just got an iPad on its own. So home sharing with an iPad, if I was to... to um, uh, have open up the videos app on the iPad and there is a, a shared button there instead of accessing the video that is physically stored on my iPad I've gone to the shared button and I can then select films or TV programs or music videos these are uh, movies uh, films so they those videos uh, films that are, are on this this slide here are on my shared library and I can click one, so Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of something. If I wanted to watch that, when I click that, tap that on the iPad, it's going to stream from my iTunes library on my computer that's in another room. Um, connecting with Bluetooth, the H is missing there, uh, is, a, is another thing you can do with um, your iPad. Bluetooth, there's a Bluetooth setting in the settings uh, app of the iPad. And so if you wanted to actually type on a real keyboard and you didn't like the, the virtual keyboard, you could buy a wireless or Bluetooth keyboard and connect it via Bluetooth and use that as a physical keyboard. 
you'll do it with microphones, you'll do it with headphones and speakers. So, I mean, the sound's pretty rubbish on the iPad if you wanted to actually listen to music or watch TV with a better sound system, then, then get a Bluetooth or wireless set of speakers and connect that to your iPad so that the sound that you hear coming from the iPad will have a better quality. And they're the only things you can really you connect with, with Bluetooth. Uh, connect your camera. So there is a, another accessory that you can buy from the App Store or anywhere that sells Apple products, the USB camera connection kit. And it has two ports there. One of the one one end of it will fit into the the uh, dock on the bottom of the uh, the thirty pin dock uh, of the um, iPad. I haven't got the latest one, which is the Lightning connector. I've got the ver the version three iPad. It still has the thirty pin connector. One uh, uh, it comes with two different connectors. One of them you can connect your camera by a USB port. So the USB uh, port uh, goes in one end of the the camera connection kit, the other one into the camera, and the other uh, accessory is the SD card reader. So it's a way of connecting your camera to the iPad and downloading all the images. Um, right, back to some apps. Um, what else you can do in, in the um, iPad is make movies. Now, iMovie is the best um, app you can download. It is, it's a paid one, it's not too expensive, but it allow you to import movies and, and use images and create your own little movies and export them. Uh, and there are other uh, different types of, of apps. So this one example is Action Movie FX, which is uh, a free version and a paid version. And here's an example of what it does. Blowing up my cat. Fairly stupid example, but it, it, it just adds sound effects and, and visual effects. Uh, you can use your iPad as a remote control. So if you if you're going to connect it to um, the TV, then you want to be able to control it. So you can download. So Remote Pro, for example, if you've got an Apple TV, rather than use the really small little app, um, remote that comes with the with the um, Apple TV, you can download an app that actually uh, turns your iPad into a giant remote control which will allow you to control your multimedia devices that you're attached to. There's so many different remotes for different for different things. It controls all Apple devices, the Remote Pro. But if you want to do that, then um, you know, go into the App Store and search for remote control. There's a different one here, Mobile Air Mouse. You need a um, you download a small program from uh, the Mobile Air Mouse website, which sits on your computer. Your computer needs to be on, so some sort of computer needs to be on for this to work. Uh, but you can see on the right there that, that at the bottom there is my dock. There are all my programs on my Mac. So I've got uh, my iPad is controlling my Mac computer. It turns it into a, a trackpad for a computer. My computer's on, and, and I might be uh, sitting on the couch and the computer is... Uh, way over in the distance, but it's uh, projected onto a big enough screen that I can see it. Uh, I can, instead of using the uh, the mouse, I can use a trackpad and make that the iPad. So do a search for remote controls for the, all the different types of things that you can control. It's not just iPad uh, related. Uh, remote access. There is a, a um, an app called Log Me In, and you can. Uh, that allows you to access your computer remotely anywhere in the world. You do need an account with Log Me In, and there is a free version of the of, of Log Me In, and there is a paid version. And you can remotely run any app on your computer from your iPad or iPhone. So if I was in a in a hotel room in the other side of the world and I wanted to uh, download a file from my home computer, I could log into using my, the Log Me In app. It would log me into my computer. My computer would need to be on at home while it's sleeps sleeping. Uh, it would log me in via via the log me in website. Would would contact my computer and I could see whatever's on my computer. Edit that file, download that file. I could watch TV on that on that um, log me in remote app. Uh, it has HD video and sound streaming. If you get the premium version, you get remote printing. Uh, it's also good if you wanted to help somebody with a 
you know, a relative who is not very good at computers, you could have log me in on their computer on a, and uh, log me in on yours and you can log in remotely to their computer and edit and move files around and fix it. Directly control your computer as if you're sitting right in front of it. It's really useful. But the premium one is the one to get. Uh, tracking your exercise is another thing the iPad can do. And um, search for exercise or fitness in the App Store and that screen capture there is just an example of the different types of fitness apps. There's fitness apps on anything. Uh, you, know, you can be a bit more specific. So if you want to look at um, boxing, videos on boxing, Put it in as a search term. Some are free, you can see here, some, uh, some are free, some cost money. Some are free but will have in-app purchases so they're deceiving you. Uh, but there are a lot of different ones. Um, printing. Um, a lot of people want to be able to print from your iPad and it is possible to print well, easily. Your printer needs to be what they call air print enabled. And if you go into the links handout there is a, is a link on um, the type of printer that is air print enabled will give you a whole list of printers that are compatible. And some of the apps here are uh, you know, for different versions of printers. So the Epson one down the bottom left, then I have an Epson printer. It's not air print enabled, but Epson actually have an app which allows me to print to that Epson printer uh, from my iPad. I have another printer, a laser printer, a Fuji printer, which is not air print enabled, and there is no app for it, and I can't access that one. So there are a number of printer apps. You just put in your, you know, the search term printer Canon, uh, and see what comes up. If you're not sure, then download the light version of a printer app just to see if you can get it to work. You know, there is more and more apps available for printing, but it, you, you have to, um, you know, test it out. If you're going to get a new printer, check out that list in the links handout for the types of printer that are air print enabled because they're simple, they just work. The other ones take a little bit of um, fiddling about. Um, voice recognition in the, the latest uh, iPad version, so the, the third generation and the current fourth generation, the iPad mini, um, all have um, voice recognition. They have a little microphone, so in most apps you can actually tap the, the microphone and record uh, what you want to say, record emails, record notes, uh, dictate. There is an app, a better app than the one that you get on the iPad called Dragon, and that will allow you to tap and dictate what you want. And as soon as you've, you've um, dictated and seen the screen grabs down there, the first one you tap the red dot to record, it's recording. As soon as you then hit done, it will translate what you've said into text and, and really quite accurately. And in that last screen grab, that's what you can do with it. You can email that text, you can copy it and put it into another application, you can post it to Facebook or you can tweet it. Uh, it is really an excellent tool for voice recognition. Uh, password manager. You, if you've got a lot of um, websites that you log into or a lot of accounts like I do, uh, you shouldn't have the same password for every account or every website asking for trouble. Um, but then how do you remember them all? Uh, putting them in a little book and writing them all down is not a good solution, but you can get password manager apps. The best one is 1Password. It does cost though, it's not free. But there are a lot of other ones there, if you search, that will do the same job. Because passwords are so critical, uh, I would pay for a password manager. 1Password is an app. You also put 1Password onto a computer, if you, if you uh, have a computer, and they will synchronise. Every time you, you um, create a new password on your iPad, if you've got it synchronised, it will then update that onto your computers. It'll accept licenses, software licenses, logins, accounts. Uh, it is an outstanding app, that one. But there are others too. Again, search on the App Store. Uh, an audio uh, editor, uh, if you're into that sort of thing. You can, there are a number of apps there that you will lay to record some, some audio, edit it, uh, add effects to it, send it off somewhere. It's not something I do, but uh, it's, uh, it's still... And a, a, a way that you can use your iPad. Uh, 
another way of using the voice recognition. So again, search for audio editors in the App Store. Uh, a scanner, and we've looked before at, um, in, in paperless at the scanner, but it makes a good scanner with, with um, DocScan HD as an example of one of the apps, but there are others. So scan receipts, take a picture of a receipt uh, rather than keep the paper, take a picture of it, then you would upload that, or if you use DocScan HD, it automatically goes into Evernote and stores all your receipts. Uh, you can take a picture of something on a whiteboard and uh, because it's a scanner, it turns that picture into editable text that can be searched. Uh, it is really a good app, that one. And it will even do you know, curvy pictures. I can see in the picture up there. It'll detect and it'll correct curled um, receipts. So if you've, if you've screwed it up in your pocket, it will find all the bits that are relevant. DocScan HD. Recommend it. QR code, you might see these little um, dots and things are all over the place now. And, and this picture, when I was at the movies the other week, that was right out front of the box office. Uh, so I took a picture of it. Uh, everything is to do with social networking now. So in, in, this was in Hoyt. So instead of actually going on my um, uh, phone or my iPad to the browser, to Safari and typing in facebook.com forward slash Hoyt Australia, I can use an app called a barcode scanner which and, and hold it up next to that little Q, to, to the uh, QR code next to the F on the Facebook, take a picture of it and it will immediately open that website. They're in supermarkets on, um, on products. They're called QR codes and it just saves you from typing in the website. So instead of typing it in, I can just take a picture with my barcode scanner and it will immediately open it. Uh, the way of the future. QR codes. Uh, you can learn an instrument on the iPad. So if you're learning the piano, I did have some uh, ideas about learning the piano, but uh, quickly I uh, lost those ideas when I found it was no good. But uh, I, I didn't buy a piano, but I, but I had some sort of um, access to piano, so I, I can download some apps on how to actually learn to use the piano, which will give me tutorials or will give me an actual keyboard to practice on. So it's not just tutorials, it is an actual keyboard that works like a piano. There's guitar ones, um, there's ones for kids, little kids. So again, go on to the App Store and search for the instrument that you want to learn um, or just put in the music, musical instruments. More specifically, if I wanted to look at the piano, learning the piano, that was the search that I put in and there are all the different types of um, apps that came up. And there's a lot more than that, that's just a few of them. Uh, learning the piano in HD, which means it's uh, anything that says HD, it's, it's, it's built, programmed, developed specifically for the iPad. Uh, GarageBand is the best music app you can get. It's, it's a, a, a Mac app, so if you've got a Mac computer, you'd get GarageBand comes with your Mac OS X. But it is a collection of instruments. It's a full recording studio. Uh, and there's also another app there called GarageBand 101. So how do you actually use GarageBand? It, you can play the piano, the organ, the guitar, the drums, bass. You can produce podcasts. It is such a good app. Um, this is an example of from a, a screen on, on the guitar. Uh, it actually sounds like a guitar. I haven't got the sound here too. I don't know how to play the guitar, so it, does, it just means nothing to me, all this. But if you're into music, GarageBand is the best app to get. Cookie. So there are a whole lot of, of um, apps on cooking, which gives you recipes, usually free. But you can also get podcasts. So, for example, if I wanted to look at the cook and the chef, from ABC TV, which is a which is a TV show, I can actually subscribe to that as a podcast and download episodes and watch them on the iPad. If I've got AirPlay, I can project that onto a TV. You can get videos, you can get podcasts, you can get books, you can get apps. There's a lot of cooking stuff there that's really useful. Um, there's an example of a of a podcast. If I wanted to look at Martha Stewart, her food channel, I could go into the podcast app. You can see on the top right there, that's the podcast app that, that, that you download from the App Store, free. Go to the uh, App Store, search for Martha Stewart, and, and you'd find that podcast, and you can subscribe to that podcast. Uh, every episode, so 
this one, I'm not sure. I think this was a monthly one. Sometimes they're daily, sometimes they're monthly. This is this episode, Mother's Day Bouquet is 5 minutes 41. I can download it uh, by um, clicking the arrow, down at the, the pointing arrow down. We'll download that episode to my computer or I can stream it by clicking on the title Mother's Day Bouquet and I can watch it in real time. But subscribing through podcasts, there's an awful lot of uh, cooking shows. Social networking, of course, uh, if, you, if you're not into that, you really need to consider um, looking at social networking because everything you do now is, is interrelated with it. Um, there are apps for all the, the major social networking sites. So um, Pinterest might be one that you would you'd want to have a look at um, by going to Pinterest.com and actually have a looking at that site. Facebook, um, Google Plus is part of, of Google's social networking solution. It's sort of not the, uh, the area to talk about what each of these sites do. I'll be looking at that in, in, in the, one of the next presentations. Staying connected, we'll talk about uh, social networking, what each of these sites does. But the iPad is outstanding for social networking, interacting with your community. Um, video conferencing. So apart from FaceTime, which is the built-in app for video conferencing, you've got Skype. Um, and it makes a pretty good Skype machine, the iPad. Um, Voice over internet protocol, VoIP. So there is a, there's an app there called Viber, which you can get for the iPhone and the iPad, which will allow you free phone calls and text. Uh, and the person that you're wanting to call also has to have Viber, so there's that uh, restriction, but that's not difficult to, to um, organise. If you've got an Android phone, you can also an Android tablet. Viber is available for those as well. So they're free anywhere in the world. Uh, text messaging is, is also part of it. Um, check that one out. Um, social networking videos, and I've sort of mentioned it before, but uh, there are videos available from so many sites. YouTube, uh, we've talked about. TED is another uh, you know, famous people in all areas do presentations and they're videotaped and they're available on TED. So in, in the field of science, of medicine, of technology, anything you can think of, there's a TED video. Facebook videos show you free app. Searches and indexes over 50 million videos from all these social networking sites, and they're, and they're much better than YouTube. This is what the cat did today. Viral videos, they're better than that. Show you will give you so much um, choice and scope for watching videos. You can put in the areas that you're interested in, the genres that you're interested in, um, so you don't have to plow through uh, stuff that you're not interested in. Download it and have a look at it. It's really worth it. Uh, and this one's an example from Show You of the types of things it's looking at. So if you're interested in nature and science, these are the, the um, areas that it has available. So you could subscribe to NASA TV. This is all free. So by hitting that plus sign, you now follow the NASA TV uh, channel and it will give you little videos that you can watch. BBC Earth, and there's all different ones. Film, art, design, living style, sports. Viral videos are the ones that you that you'll see on the news programs. Of they are the dog that bit the cat's head off or something. Viral videos, if you like that sort of thing, where you can subscribe to that channel. Uh, but show you well worth looking at in the settings of, of show you you set up the interest that you have and then you can subscribe to by clicking tapping the plus you'll start to see all of those videos um, Pandora is your own personal radio station so if you've got a favorite song you you you'd, um, type in that song and then Pandora will look at that song and look at the artist and the genre and it creates a custom station for you that plays similar music. So it's like an online radio station. Um, good. Note taking. The iPad is wonderful for taking notes. And there are a lot of note taking apps, and believe me, I've downloaded heaps of them. But the one that I use the most and is the best, and, in, and um, 
does the most range is called Notability. It's been rated the best note-taking app for 2012, and it combines uh, handwriting with photos and videos. If you're going to do note-taking, then you should go and buy yourself a stylus. But search on the App Store and just download a few, and if you don't know how to use it, so I, I didn't know how to use Notability, so go onto YouTube, do a search for Notability, look for a video that's reasonably uh, recent, not like four years ago, because they keep updating the apps, and then watch it, and then do what it says, and, and learn it that way. Because you're not going to find instruction manuals with apps. Uh, YouTube is the best way. I work if you really want something that's a little bit more like you're used to on a computer, so like Word and Excel and PowerPoint, then this is the Mac version of it. Um, word processing, if you want a true word processor, uh, Pages. Spreadsheet for, uh, is, is Numbers, the name of the app, and Keynote is the presentation one, and that's what I've done this presentation on is Keynote. Uh, and you can buy them separately. Um, but there are other ways of, of doing word processing. And these are cost. They're not, they're, not, they're not free. But they're not that expensive that they're out of reach. But they're pretty useful. They're productivity tools. Uh, podcasts. We've talked a bit about podcasts and what they are. So podcasts are uh, video. Well, this is what a definition of it. A digital media file. So it can be either a, an, an audio digital file. It could be a video file. So, for example, I might listen to a radio um, station that has a technology program that talk, and it answers questions about people's computer problems, and they make that available as a podcast, and they put it onto, their, onto iTunes. So I can find that in iTunes, and I can subscribe to it, and I can listen to that program whenever I like, because it's downloaded, it's not streamed, it's downloaded to my computer. But it, uh, it can include oral material, oral material, video pictures. And uh, you've got a podcast app there, and you go and search in the uh, podcast, in the app store for a podcast. Put in a, a topic, and what it'll, it'll give you in your search results are uh, podcasts associated with that search term, as well as songs and movies and videos of that as well. Um, so podcasts can be downloaded to a computer if you've got iTunes running on, onto an iPad, a tablet, a phone, and you can listen to them whenever you want. They're, they're, they're available for offline viewing at a later time, and they're free. Uh, 40, the 40th reason, use your iPad as a torch. Uh, and there are, there, are, there are a whole lot of apps that are torched that, that once you, when you download it and you just turn it on, it's, the whole screen is just what, like a torch. Get the light. Um, shares and stocks, so if you're interested in that, there are a number of, of apps and of books, uh, audio books, e-books, podcasts on shares and stocks, and the Australian Stock Exchange has its own app as well. So if you're interested in that, go into the App Store and put in the search to shares or stocks or stock market and see what comes up. Uh, animation. So there are, there are a lot of animation apps where you can create your own animation. And this, this is just one example. The iPad is not just a consumption device. It's a, a device that you can create content. And this iMovie was one, this one's another one. Create your own content. Uh, animations that you create can be saved as, as video. Share that video to YouTube or to Facebook or just download it and watch it yourself on your iPad or computer. There's a, a number of other uh, apps there. When you put in the search term in the App Store, Animation Creator HD, at the bottom of your search result, you'll also see something like this, Customers Also Bought, which gives you some other possible animation apps that you might investigate, and if they're free or if they cost you. Uh, groceries. Uh, all of the, the supermarkets in Australia have apps. So there's the Woolworths one, a Coles, an Aldi. Uh, online Supermarket Australia. So the, the Australia with the shopping trolley will give you a list of every supermarket in Australia and where, where to find it. Grocery run is for online shopping. Uh, the Woolworths one, there's an example there of, of, of the Woolworths app. 
uh, where you can put in your, your grocery list, you can put in recipes. It will tell you what um, aisle to find things in. You can scan uh, with the Woolworths app, you can actually scan the price and use it as a QR code reader, a barcode reader. Uh, if you can be bothered, who can be bothered with that? Um, the iPad is good for parental control. So you can, you can set up restrictions on who can access uh, what content on your iPad. So if you've got grandkids or young kids and you don't want them buying things from the App Store, then you can set restrictions on what they can buy and what they can see. So even though it's not strictly an app, it's still a very useful element of the iPad. There's an example there going into the settings menu into general and into restrictions and you can turn off things. So for example, if you didn't want them to be able to use Siri, you could turn it off. Uh, if you didn't want Siri to be able to, to use explicit language, you could turn that off. You can set ratings. So you can only, uh, whoever looks at the iPad can only watch um, programs that are rated G. And you can set up all these restrictions and you can just turn them on when you have people coming over that, that are going to use it. So if your grandkids are coming over for a, for a visit and they want to play on your iPad, you can go into restrictions, put in your, your password, and all your restrictions will be enforced. When they go home, you can turn off the restrictions. And it might save you know, a lot of heartache. In-app purchases at the bottom of that screen there, you can turn that off. So if uh, kids are, are playing with the iPad and, they, and they've, they've got a game, and to continue playing that game, they need to fork out five dollars for a hundred coins. You can turn that off, so they're not going to um, use your credit card or your credit and uh, ruin you. Um, number forty-five is is use it as a uh, for the weather. There are a lot of weather apps. Uh, you can have um, you know, it comes with a with a, a weather app built in, but it's not really useful. You can get better ones that will give you the current time weather and projected weather and weather in different countries. Some are free, some are not. Uh, photo editing. Now, it has a camera, which we talked about in the built-in apps. It has uh, simple editing in the Photos app, but really, really simple. The best photo editing app is iPhoto. And uh, I'm not sure how much it costs. It is cost. That does cost. It's not that bad. And then there's another app which will show you how to use iPhoto, called Tutor for iPhoto. There are many, many apps for photo editing, and you need to look at all the descriptions of them and the reviews of those apps to see which ones you want to use. iPhoto is the best one, even if you don't have a Mac. Uh, if you're into photography, uh, there are a number of tutorials on photography, books, podcasts, apps, and there's a, there's a few apps there, magazines, iTunes U, if you wanted to know how to use, uh, how to use Photoshop, which is, it's not, you haven't got Photoshop on here, but if you had Photoshop on your computer and you didn't know how to use it, there is an iTunes U course on how to use Photoshop, or a podcast on how to use Photoshop, so weekly tips, uh, have a good look at the range of things that, that you can do on any topic, but this one, for example, is photography. And um, a couple of other photo ones. So Pic Collage, would, will, um, you can take photos and create a little collage, save it as an image, export the image, share the image. Um, 49, again, a, a heart rate meter, which I actually have, have used. It, it actually takes your heart rate, which seems to be quite uh, accurate. You put your finger on the, on the uh, camera and uh, it does your heart rate and saves it. I wouldn't rely on that over the doctor. Uh, this is the end of part two. The, the rest of the uh, part three will look at uh, reasons 50 to 100.